Ben, he's such a kid sometimes. Yeah, yeah. he's such a kid. Nice to have you, Darren Bent. Thank you. Nice to have you. You are listening to Drive on TalkSport, Adi Alipo and the aforementioned Darren Bent. Still to come. Well, perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot a man. That, that's me, you know. By the way, I, I watched that film the other day. So good. So good, man. Like, oh, so good. Incredible. I think it could be as good as the one with the Joker. <sighs> it's such a difficult one because I love Heath Ledger. That, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, Heath Ledger's performance was insane. But I think they both were. Yeah. Both were incredible. Yeah. Are you, are you going to watch this new Joker film that's come out? I watched it last one, it was good, but I'm always a bit funny when there's no Batman. This is it. I thought they were going like, to you know try and introduce. Is he Penguin's the new. Yeah, yeah. Is, if there's no Batman in so, it. Well, yeah, it's, it's not good enough, is no. it? No. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, still to come, we are going to be taking a look at the weekend's big fixtures and Bentley's EFL corner. Uh, now, though, Arsenal hosts Southampton tomorrow, and it's live and exclusive over on TalkSport 2. Looking brilliant. He's taken out one player and got to the edge of the penalty area. He gets towards the edge of the box and sends across into Havertz, who gets there and scores. Rising high above Donnarumma. There's an argument now he's Arsenal's most important player, and that includes Saka in that as well. He's so intelligent. The way he occupies the spaces, the way he glides everything together, his work ethic. They have to win something this season. Oh, it's an old cliche, but you've just got to play one game at a time. Watched them on Tuesday night and they were outstanding. And so, like what Mikel and his coaching staff have done with that team is incredible. And Russell Martin. He's looking like a man who wants the ground to open up and swallow him. It's 3-0 before half-time. Bam, his strength of character to ignore the noise and stay on par. But ultimately, that squad, for me, is not good enough to stay in the Premier League, and I'm not sure that's necessarily Russell Martin's fault. Tavernier picks it up Whoa. and shoots down the throat of Ramsdale, and it was moving. First of all, say thank you so much for what he's done for the club. What he did for, for me at my time at Arsenal, I can only thank him for. So I'm looking forward to a nice return. Might not be that nice. As we discussed earlier, Southampton is still without a league win this season and it doesn't get any easier as they go to Arsenal. Remember, the game is live over on TalkSport 2 tomorrow. Arsenal sit third in the league going into the weekend, just a point off top spot in the Premier League. And key, I think, look, key to their success that has been, I think, the former Kai Havertz. I think he's been fantastic, mm. especially with um, Odegaard being out. But Saliba and Gabriel, I mean, those two at the back, those two man mountains have just been sensational. Not just defensively, but, I mean, going forward as well, I mean, them from set pieces, it's a problem, isn't it? Only conceded five goals this mm. season. Those two, I know Liverpool conceded less, less with two, but you're right. The, the set plays for Arsenal, every single time they get a corner, you're almost like, on the edge of your seat. You like, know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. They're mm. so dangerous from free kicks and corners and clearly the set piece coach has helped. Mm. They've worked on that. Because this isn't by accident. They've worked on that. But I just feel like that, that will... That will help determine where Arsenal finish the season, having a rock-solid defence, because, yes, there are teams out there that have got good back fours, incredible attacking players, but Arsenal, the last couple of weeks, have almost relied on the back the back line mm. to kind of get results and also set plays. Now, if that if that's the case, and then your team kicks into gear and you start playing that real free, free-flying football with that defensive unit, Arsenal are going to go close again. Well, what about the conversation that's starting to happen now? And I, I think it's ridiculously too early, but a lot of people are talking about Saliba and Gabriel as being up there in terms of partnerships, the best partnerships we've ever seen in the Premier League, centre-back partnerships. I mean, far too early, Is it? but... Oh, stop yeah, it. I'm joking. Oh, okay, I thought you were <laughs> I was ready, literally. Like, brrr, I was ready to go. But um, it's a good partnership, but it is too early to have a conversation. Yeah, if, this, listen, there's an argument that they're the best pair ever. And I'm sorry, no, whoa, 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 let me slow that down. Yeah. There's an argument to say that they're the best pair in the Premier League now. Yeah. There's an argument, conversation. Yeah, yeah, but I, obviously I, not ever. I mean, yeah. the, the, off the top of my head, Vidic and Ferdinand. Yeah. I think about those two and I think, oh my God, they were so yeah. hard to play against because there was a little bit of both there. Yeah. You had Vidic that was horrible. That he, I promise you, his studs were like one inch at the bottom of his boots. Mm. I remember saying to him one time on the pitch, why are your studs so big? Like, <laughs> honestly, they're like rugby studs, yeah, yeah. right? And Ferdinand was like the Rolls Royce. Yeah. Bring the ball down, quick, strong, could play. And also, Vidic could play, by the way, so I'm not doing him a disservice. Mm. He could play as well. Then you've got Terry and Carvalho. Yeah. Like, there have been unbelievable pairs. That I mean, even you've not even mentioned some of the Arsenal ones. I mean, yeah, Campbell and Torrey. Yeah, they're nowhere near better than that, yeah, are they? So I, th- I think... But they have the potential. You look at them. I think you look at their physicality and the way they play, you think they've got the potential. But ultimately, Arsenal have to win something with those two mm. for it to be considered the best. Better um, than Van Dijk and Canate? Um, yeah, I'd say as a pair, yeah. I mean, to start the season, Canate didn't play. Yeah, if he did, they came off the bench against Ipswich. Oh, okay, he's sorry. Played, he's played every game since. Okay, well, so he's not played every game then? Yeah. All right, he's, <laughs> he's 45 minutes. But no, I think as a pair... Yeah. As, an, as a standout individual, I would still give... Van Dijk's the Yes, player. the edge over Saliba. Yes, I would, right? 
But as a pairing, I think those two complement each other well. But to kind of put them in that bracket as the best ever, no, not yet. Come on. All right, let's move away from it. You're right. You got even, even, even Tony Adams and, and Martin Keane or Steve Bold. Yeah, not even. Like you say, even like, ooh, it's close. Tony Adams and Steve Bold, miles better. Yeah, so yeah, no, not yet. Miles better. All right, let's move away from it. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.